If this agreement was, was enforced, so let's say, let's enforce the um, support for the Compromise of 1850 as a kind of sign of party loyalty. If that happened, the two major parties then would not disagree on this issue. Remember we said that one of the key features of a vital and vibrant two-party system is to really have different positions, distinctive positions on issues, especially issues that Americans, that most Americans cared a lot about. Well, if the agreement was enforced in this way, the two major parties would have consensus over this issue. Some politicians thought that was okay. They viewed the slavery extension issue or the slavery question in general as too difficult, as, as, as too controversial, uh, you know, as a, as a political hot potato that they simply couldn't handle. And they thought that new issues, perhaps maybe even new parties, would emerge once the compromise had been universally accepted. Well, as we'll see, um, uh, the issues don't go away. New parties do emerge. The question remains, what if the two major parties did agree about the finality of the compromise, but voters in the North and the South remained unhappy about its features and remained concerned about the larger issue of slavery's extension? What then would happen to the once loyal constituencies of the major parties? Might they grow disenchanted with the major parties, go looking elsewhere for political groups that were addressing these concerns? you know, these concerns about slavery in a meaningful way. Well, this, of course, is precisely what happened in the North in the wake of the conference.